Hey guys! For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Marissa and you are currently watching Little Spider 9, which is my YouTube booktube channel. Now, today is something very, very special. Today marks exactly two years since I started booktubing, which is absolutely insane. I can't believe it's already been that long. It doesn't feel like it, let me tell you that. So because today is a little bit of a special day, I wanted to do something a little different to celebrate my two-year birthday, booktube birthday, and I decided to do something that I've been putting off since I moved into this apartment, and that is my updated bookshelf tour. I thought this would be a really cool bookshelf tour because I don't have all of my books with me. I still have probably half my collection at my parents' house, but I only had one bookshelf that I could bring over to the apartment with me. So basically, when I show you the books that I have, these are the books that either mean a lot to me and that I wanted to have with me, or they are the books that I plan on reading in the, new, in the immediate future. I don't know why that was so hard to say. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. Okay guys, brief overview of my bookshelf situation here. Okay, let's start down here at this little stack at the bottom. Obviously this is not a bookshelf, this is a box of printer paper, but like I said, I'm making do with what I have. These are some of my DVDs, and then underneath that, are all of the Naruto manga issues that I own. Because there are just so many issues, I have kept up with the manga online in other ways, but I just couldn't afford to keep up with every single issue but i was really into it in like middle school and high school so those just had to come with me lots of nostalgic value there popping up here to my top shelf we have mainly classics on the left and mainly graphic novels and comic book type things on the right so it's a little bit of a random mix but we also have this cute little fox guy guarding my books who was a christmas ornament that broke so starting here on the left we have Wuthering Heights and Sir Gawain and the Green Knight both in these fantastic Norton critical editions which honestly were some of my favorite editions as an English major because they have so much amazing material in the back that it was always a really good place to start for essays. Then I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, one of these amazing Penguin English Library editions of Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I have Kurt Vonnegut's collection of short stories Welcome to the Monkey House. Walden and Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. I have Pride and Prejudice, obviously. Then over here we have George Orwell, 1984, which I need to read. Jane Austen, Persuasion. Anne Bronte, The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall. Wildfeld? Wildfeld? I'm not sure. Howard's End by E.M. Forster. And then Howl's Moving Castle by Diane. Diana Wynne Jones. This is the only kind of odd book on the whole shelf. This is The Winslow Incident by Elizabeth Voss, and it's something that I won off a Goodreads giveaway um, about a year ago, and I have yet to read it. I know that it is a thriller kind of mystery story, but I'm not sure if it is adult fiction or young adult fiction. So it's kind of just up here right now because I didn't have any room on my other shelves, but when I get other shelves in here, I will be definitely moving this one. Then over here we have my very few graphic novels, starting with American Born Chinese by Jean Nguyen Yang, and my Alison Bechdel books, Fun Home and Are You My Mother. Then right next to them is a Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, bind up from IDW and two of their catalogs because they came and gave a talk at my law school um, last semester and gave us swag bags. This is my series shelf with the exception of Vicious over there on the far left. I have my Lunar Chronicles books, the last poli policeman trilogy, excuse me, some Star Wars novels which technically aren't a straight up series but because they all relate to the same series of movies I've put them on the shelf anyways. My Outlander book by Diana Gabaldon and then the Millennium Trilogy, which I actually still have yet to finish. I had like 200 pages left in The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest, and now I'm going to have to go back and reread that whole book because I have forgotten everything. I also keep my speakers on here, and these are like super throwback. I got these in 2006 when I was in eighth grade, um, right after I got my very first iPod Nano, and I believe it was the first Nano that ever came out. It made me feel like the coolest person in the world, and luckily these still work really, really well. It might be fairly obvious that this is my fantasy shelf. So over on the left here we have Love Grossman's The Magicians, and then all of my Tolkien books, with the exception of Lord of the Rings, which stays by my bedside table because that's what I'm reading at the moment. Then we move into John Flanagan's Ranger's Apprentice series, which 
is one of my favorite series of all time. I, Even though I haven't finished it, I've only read up through book four, I feel like I can say that. It is a middle grade fantasy series and I highly, highly suggest you guys check it out. I'm obviously still trying to collect the hardcovers. Is it dystopian? I don't know. But I have Rick Yancey's The Fifth Wave and then The Resurrectionist, which is kind of fantasy historical fiction. But I think my favorite thing on this shelf is this. This is what my brother got me for college graduation because he is awesome and he understands me like nobody else. This is Sting. And this is my letter opener. And finally, down here on the bottom shelf, we have my literary fiction and nonfiction. So again, starting on the left, we have my Jimbo Lahiri books. I wrote my senior thesis on a couple of short stories from this collection, Interpreter of Maladies. I also own Unaccustomed Earth, which was her second collection of short stories, but I've only actually read one of the stories from this collection. Uh, the Namesake, which I've seen the movie of, but I have yet to read the book, and her latest novel, The Lowland. And over here we have my Kazoo Ishiguro books, another author I absolutely love. I recently finished The Remains of the Day, which was beautiful and very interesting, but didn't quite live up to its hype for me. I also own A Pale View of Hills, which is my most recent uh, Ishiguro purchase, and possibly my favorite book of all time, Never Let Me Go. I read this for the first time in high school and I've read it I believe two or three times since and it just gets more beautiful every single time and if you haven't read it yet I highly suggest that you do. Next I have Mohsen Hamid's How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia which I have yet to read and then my Murakami books. I absolutely loved Norwegian Wood. This was one of my favorite books of 2013 and I'm very excited to get into more of his work. However, I'm slightly concerned because I've heard that this is very unusual for a Murakami in that it does not have any magical realism and I know that that is what he's very very well known for um, so I'm slightly concerned that I won't enjoy the rest of his work as much but I'm gonna give it a try anyways on my most recent trip to San Francisco I picked up South of the Border West of the Sun and I just want to say that whoever designs his covers does a spectacular job all of the books are beautiful and I think they look fantastic next to each other on my shelf. I have another collection of short stories here. This is Battleborn by Claire Bay Watkins. I've already read several of the stories in here for class back in undergrad and I really liked what I did read so I brought it along to finish it up. This is her very first collection of short stories. Over here I have The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet. I hope that's how you say that, um, by David Mitchell. And I know he's most famous for Cloud Atlas, which um, my family does own a copy of, but I have yet to read. I actually listened to a BBC podcast with him um, last week, and he seems like a very interesting man, so I'm even more excited to get into this one. I'm gonna have to switch angles here slightly, and I'm going to move this lovely red lantern or whatever it is that you want to call it. Uh, this was a housewarming gift from my mom, so thanks mom. Underneath it, I keep a Japanese grammar book and you might be wondering why, and that's because I am trying to reteach myself Japanese. I took Japanese for about 15 years from the time I was in around first grade through my junior year of high school and I pretty much gave up right after we got to the more difficult kanji and when the conjugations got too complex for my brain. Sadly, I don't remember a lot of Japanese outside of the very basic, you know, hi, how are you and similar phrases. I can actually understand more than I can speak and when it comes to reading or writing, I'm very, very limited to only reading and understanding katakana and hiragana. So I just want to get back into it. I've pulled out a lot of my old kanji materials and worksheets, and I've been listening to different language podcasts and playing Japanese games. Eventually I will get to this book, but I think right now I just need to focus on refreshing my vocabulary. Getting back to the rest of the books, I have JK Rowling's The Casual Vacancy, and with that ends the literary fiction, and we move into nonfiction. Starting off down here, we have The Geek's Guide to Dating by Eric Smith, a lovely quirk book, which I talked about in my February wrap-up. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. This is a book that I have gotten through about halfway so many times without actually finishing it. So the next time I pick it up, 
it's gonna happen. Then we have a biography of Tolkien by Tom Shippey, and then this book. This is Give Me Something Better, the profound, progressive, and occasionally pointless history of Bay Area punk from Dead Kennedys to Green Day. This might seem like a random book, but for those of you that don't know, I enjoy punk rock. I got really into it over the summer and wanted to find out more about Bay Area punk because that's where I was living and picked this one up used. Moving on from that random book, I have How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran, which I have yet to read, and yes, I'm very, very frustrated by that bright green sticker on the front that I can't seem to get off without creating a crap ton of sticky stuff. And lastly, I have Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, which I was given either for a birthday present or for graduation, I can't remember. Okay guys, that was my updated bookshelf tour. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Again, those are the books that mean a lot to me and that I plan on reading soon. So if you have read any of those books on my shelves and you would like to urge me to read one of them sooner rather than later, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Happy booktubing. Bye.